Let us pray. Jesus, our guide, you explain the scriptures and reveal yourself to the disciples at Emmaus. Now, by your Spirit, enlighten our minds to understand their witness and ignite our hearts to receive your word. Amen. Where do you go to get away from it all? Our regular congregation knows me well and knows that I love to get off out for a run or for a hike. In these strange days of lockdown, running hasn't been much of a problem. Um, indeed, probably a lot easier as there are fewer cars on the road and I need to worry less about um, crossing roads and so on and so forth. But in these last uh, few weeks, where the weather has been absolutely beautiful, I find myself yearning to get off for a long hike in the mornings. Indeed, I had hoped even that I might have been able to do an overnight and fit in some wild camping. Well, I tried the wild camping in the back garden of the manse. And... To be honest, apart from getting cold, it wasn't much of a way to get away from it all. And so, my time will come in the mornings, no doubt. But when you want to get away from it all, what do you want? What is it you're really looking for? Regardless of the place that you choose to go to, whether indeed it's a place or not. What I find I'm looking for is freedom from being disturbed. Somewhere where I'm far away from the hustle and bustle of daily life. Somewhere where I have peace to think things over. When life gets too much, when you are discouraged or downhearted, when someone has let you down, when your dreams are shattered by tragedy or disappointment, when your joy has run out, your hope is gone. When there seems to be no meaning to life. Where do you go? Emmaus was a real place. A village in first century Palestine. But Emmaus has come to be interpreted by many over the years. As a place you go or something you do. To get away from it all. To escape from any or all of those things that I've just mentioned. MS is the place you go or the things you do when there is nowhere else to go. And you can think of nothing else to do. So, where or what is your MS? We'll come back to that shortly. But first, Let's take a look at the scripture that Andrew read for us earlier. And we pick up the story on the day of Jesus' resurrection with two of his followers on the road to Emmaus, a village which is about seven miles away from Jerusalem, a good three or four hours walk. Luke tells us that they were discussing all of the things that had happened, by which he means the events of Holy Week. Jesus' arrest and trial, his suffering and death on the cross. As we follow the story, it becomes clear that these two disciples have lost hope. We had hoped that he would be the one to redeem Israel. Truth be told, they were devastated by what had happened. Their expectations of who Jesus was and how he was going to release them from the oppression of the Roman occupiers were dashed by his crucifixion and death. This wasn't meant to happen. This wasn't how the story was supposed to end. So they head to a mess. What was the reason for them to go there? We're not sure. Perhaps Emmaus was home, or they maybe had some business there, 
Or perhaps it was just somewhere they were escaping to, to get away from the highly charged atmosphere in Jerusalem. We can't be sure of their reason for going, but they were on the road to a mess. What about you? Have you been to a mess? A place you escape to when you're hurting and in need of healing, when you're crying and in need of comfort, when you're exhausted and in need of renewal. Can you look back at a time or times in your life when you have been in that place? There's been a death or a tragic loss. You've experienced marital problems or financial problems or children going off the rails. Maybe it's been unemployment or serious illness. And you knew that you needed to go somewhere, even if only in your mind. Somewhere to go to, go to get away from the disappointment, to get away from the hopelessness, to get away from the shattered dreams. Maybe indeed that's where you find yourself today, in the midst of lockdown. The road to a mess is frequented by ordinary men and women. People like Cleopas and his companion. People like you and like me. Do you know the Emmaus experience? Life has its disappointments. And I think if we're honest, we've probably all been there at one time or another. When we say, we had hope. That it would be different than it is. And we've had to seek escape from it all. There must be more. Yes, the journey to Emmaus can be a lonely one. But it need not be. Let's return to the Jerusalem to Emmaus road. And pick up the story again. In verse 15 we read. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognising him. And as we read on, they explained to Jesus what had been going on in Jerusalem, telling of their hopes and dreams about himself and how he had been crucified. They related the account of the women and their resurrection story even though they clearly didn't believe it themselves. And then Jesus begins to explain to them about himself, how it was that he had to suffer before he could be glorified, explaining how the whole of scripture, right from the very beginning, points to him. And we know, as we read on, that as he spoke with them, their hearts were burning within them even though at that point they still did not recognise Jesus. It was in listening to him explain scripture, and later as he broke bread with them, that Jesus revealed himself to them. The risen Lord met with them on their journey, and through word and sacrament their hope was restored and their vision renewed. Is that not the case for us as well? That wherever we are on the journey of life, maybe on our road to Emmaus, that the risen Lord Jesus meets us. And he meets us as we are. He met with Cleopas and his companion, not when everything was going well, but when they were in the midst of their deepest Hopelessness. Jesus met them and brought hope, resurrection hope, into the midst of that situation. I know that some of you are in that hopeless place just now. I know what it's like. I've been there myself. But just as Jesus met those original Emmaus travellers, so also he will meet with us. 
we do not have to undertake the journey alone. We may not recognize him at first, but as we share our story with him through prayer, as we listen intently to him through his word, by his spirit, as we share in bread and in wine, we will recognize him. And not only recognize him, but be blessed by him and encouraged by him as we continue on our journey through life. Regardless of where you are on life's journey, Jesus meets you where you are. You don't need to be perfect. You don't need to have it all together. It doesn't matter whether life is great or terrible or somewhere in between. Jesus meets with you on your life's journey. If you listen to him through the scriptures and through prayer, he will reveal himself to you as the risen Christ and he will fill you with resurrection hope. Not only will he fill you with hope, but he will strengthen you to continue on your journey and to share the good news with everyone you meet. Amen.